Hello, everyone. Welcome to our course of Chinese culture. In this section, please join us to appreciate Chinese opera. Chinese opera is the traditional form of Chinese drama, which embraces literature, music, dance, martial arts, and acrobatics. It is considered the one of the three Asian forms of drama in the world with the other two being Greek tragedy and comedy, the Indian Sanskrit opera. Unfortunately, Chinese operas are the only survivor of these three Asian dramas in the world. The other two had become history. So Chinese operas are the cream of Chinese culture and even the world culture. But before we touch upon the most popular Beijing opera, we need to know something about the most ancient and influential traditional opera in China, Kunqu Opera, or Kunqiang. Kunqu Opera is an opera art system of Kunshan of Suzhou in China, which was originated during the end of Yuan and the beginning of Ming Dynasty. Many types of Chinese operas, including Beijing Opera, were developed from this opera. Therefore, it has long been considered the mother of Chinese opera. Kunqu opera has the most complete performance system in Chinese opera history. It is known for its gentle and clear vocals, beautiful and refined tunes, and dance-like stage performances. However, towards the end of the Qing dynasty, it lost its appeal and was on the verge of extinction. But with efforts from many aspects, Kunqu Opera has attracted worldwide attention. In 2001, it was listed on the Oral and Intangible Cultural Heritage List by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. In its 600 history, Kunqu has accumulated a large collection of more than 400 zhe zixi. Some of the scripts were written by famous playwrights, such as Injustice to Dou E by Guan Hanqing, The West Chamber by Wang Shifu, Peony Pavilion by Tang Xianzu, Palace of Eternal Youth by Hong Sheng. For many Chinese and most foreigners, their impression of Chinese opera is often the mysterious facial makeup from Beijing opera. And now, the facial makeup is almost a symbol of China. Therefore, to understand Chinese culture, some knowledge of Beijing opera is also very important. It was during the reign of Empire of Qianlong in the Qing Dynasty that Beijing opera emerged. In 1790, an Anhui troupe led by Gao Langting came to Beijing to participate in the performances in celebration of the 80th birthday of Empire Qianlong. It was soon followed by three other theatrical troops from Anhui. During their practice, these troops borrowed some of the plays, tunes, and acting skills from each other absorbed some of the folk music and tunes from Kunqu Opera and Shanxi Opera, and were affected by Beijing dialect and customs. Over time, it developed its own artistic style and a complete repertoire. It is now regarded as the crown of Chinese opera. To appreciate Beijing's opera, one needs to know the four artistic means and the four basic skills of Beijing opera, namely singing, recitation, acting, and acrobatic fighting. The performers use gestures, footwork, and other movements to express the actions such as riding a horse, rolling a boat, opening a door, going upstairs, climb a hill, or traveling. For different characters, one can analyze by their costume, makeup, and singing pattern. Normally, 
The characters of Beijing Opera are classified according to sex, age, disposition, profession, and social status. There are four major roles today: Sheng, Dan, Jing, Chou. Sheng represents a grown-up male who is generally positive and can be further divided into Lao Sheng, Wu Sheng, Xiao Sheng, and Wa Wa Sheng. Lao Sheng are decisive and honest middle-aged or old men. They are also called Xu Sheng because they usually wear artificial beards. Wu Sheng represents young generals skilled in martial arts. Sometimes, they hold weapons, wear armor, look dignified, and their action is swift. Xiao Sheng represents clean-shaven and handsome young men, frequently portrayed in love stories. Dan refers to various female roles, including Lao Dan, Qing Yi, Hua Dan, Wu Dan, and Cai Dan. Lao Dan are elderly women. They usually use their natural voices, which are rich, loud, high-pitched, and melodious. Qing Yi generally stands for a young or middle-aged woman of strong character and a refined disposition. Most of them are faithful wives, loving mothers, and pure women from feudal society. Hua Dan plays a young woman with a frank and open-minded personality. They are mostly from humble families or a maid servant in a rich family. Wu Dan are women skilled in martial arts, including generals, heroic outlaws, and fairies. What is worth mentioning is that historically, Dan character used to be performed by male actors. The famous four great Dan actors, Mei Lanfang, Cheng Yanqiu, Shang Xiaoyun, and Xun Huisheng, are all male. They have created various images of ancient Chinese women and expressed their tenderness, elegance, and subtlety. They have made great contributions to the performance of the Dan role and the development of Beijing opera. Jing is the most romantic and exaggerated role in Beijing opera. They wear colorful paint on their faces, so they are also known as Hua Lian. They can be classified into Zheng Jing, Fu Jing, and Wu Jing. Zheng Jing is also known as Da Hua Lian. A Zheng Jing performer mainly sings. Most Zheng Jing are serious, loyal officials and generals who firmly uphold justice. Wu Jing role, performers mainly move about, speaking and making postures. Wu Jing role involves acrobatic fighting and tumbling with minimal singing and speaking. Chou are sharp-witted, clever, humorous. They serve as a foil to the leading character and usually is the first to go on the stage during performance. No chou, no play is the popular saying in China, which shows its importance in a play. The chou characters usually wear a patch of wet around their eyes, and their nose is sometimes outlined in black. They can be all kinds of people from high-ranking officials to servants, from scholars to farmers. They can be old and young, male and female, and they can be kind or evil. They represent far more characters than Sheng, Dan, and Jing. Seeing a Beijing opera performance for the first time, most foreigners would probably wonder, why do they paint their faces? What do those colors and patterns mean? Well. The facial makeup in Beijing opera tells lots of the stories of the character. The color patterns are called lian pu or facial makeup, which can exaggerate the face and the facial expressions of the character. The facial makeup can also tell the personality of a particular character. Different colors in the facial makeup have different meanings. For example, red 
means uprightness and loyalty. Purple for loyal, brave, and noble characters. Black for faithful, brave, and straightforward characters. Yellow for fierce, brutal, and calculating characters. White for imperious and treacherous people. Gold silver the makeup for ghosts and gods. With the development of Beijing Opera, there have been established rules on how to paint a facial makeup pattern and what a pattern represents. The facial makeup also reveals Chinese people's evaluation on historical figures. For example, Guan Yu, a general of the Three Kingdoms period, has a red face, which means he was a loyal person. Cao Cao, a Han Dynasty prime minister, has a white face, which means that he was treacherous and cunning. Bao Sheng, also known as Bao Qingtian, was a judge, and his face is painted black, which tells us that he was impartial and incorruptible as a judge. Besides, the lines and patterns drawn on the face can also help us to understand the character better. For example, a distorted face drawn with asymmetrical lines generally represents a villain or a complex or someone whose face has been wounded. And the black butterfly pattern on Zhang Fei's face tells us that he was a brave but reckless man. And the fact that butterfly is good at flying indicates Zhang Fei's given name Fei, which means flying in Chinese. It is truly a masterpiece perfectly combining personality and artistic design. Okay, here comes the end of this section. In this section, we mainly explored the charm of country opera and Beijing opera, the most representative forms of traditional Chinese opera. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. See you next time.